Hello, and welcome to my lecture recital. Uh, I'm going to be going over bassoon excerpts, and I have chosen three excerpts to uh, review with you. Um, so each of these actually end up in the top ten of the most asked excerpts uh, for bassoon orchestra uh, auditions. So, the most asked is the Mozart uh, Marriage of Figaro Overture. next little part that's this part in the fourth measure of that whole phrase is probably the hardest part just because of the fingering um, it, it's I, I have a hard time with that measure along with this measure two measures later um, but I'll go ahead and uh, try and show you what it would sound like uh, and the difference going into that. And I'll just do the whole excerpt. <laughs> still group them in 
uh, different groupings, such as entire excerpt but it's really um, brought out with these breath marks so what I would do is the eighth note right before 
the breath mark, I would actually cut that off so that it creates more space and it creates it makes it more evident that you're trying to bring out that next uh, note on the upbeat. And it even has an accent on the uh, eighth note that comes after the breath mark. So whenever you create that space, it gives you more opportunity to have more accent. Like this. <laughs> has to be a short little breath. There we go. Cool. Um, okay. So that is Rimsey Corsica. I'm sorry, not Rimsey Corsica. That is Ravel's Bolero. The next excerpt that I wanted to go over with y'all is Rimsey Corsica's Scheherazade. Now, I do realize that I played this earlier in the semester, um, but I figured I wanted I wanted to be able to break it down for y'all and tell you, tell you what my approach to it was um, with the help of Sister Crawford. So I, I'll I'll play all every excerpt that is asked for, uh, starting with the first one. Let me make sure. That is not the correct one. There we go. Okay. So, here's the first excerpt. this that I like to that I really enjoyed with this is that there's different sections with this piece which creates different characters in the shape in the Scheherazade piece um, it's about uh, it's about a uh, king that has Scheherazade as his wife and he also um, he's had several wives before and he's killed every one of them before, so it's kind of tragic. Um, but Scheherazade tells stories throughout the entire piece. And so each of these little sections is a different character that Scheherazade is portraying. So this first little section, it's, it's nice and soft and and then going up into this crescendo, there's accents, and that's a different character being created. And then going into this next little section, it's then more lyrical. And then even right here, it's another uh, little character. That's why I went down in my dynamic whenever I played through it because that's another character. Da, 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 da. And there's a little crescendo written marked here. I've I it's it was marked in my part um, for the actual performance too. But I I don't like to take that um, because we're still in the same character and you can still have a little bit of dynamic contrast through here, but it, it needs to stay about the same dynamics all the way up to about here. Um, 
And then after you get th uh, done with that E, that's every single um, recording that I have listened to, they have a retard on that. And they really stretch out these last two measures quite a bit because it's another character that has been created. So, moving on to the next excerpt, maybe. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. There we go. Go here. The next excerpt has three different sections that are all very similar to each other. So, with this one, I'll actually go ahead and explain before I play it. There's three sections, and each one adds a note or a different figure in it to make it different from the previous one. And so, each one needs to be more dramatic than the one that preceded it. Um, and the way that you can do that is at the very big. Uh, so at the for on the first one, um, right before it, there's triplet figures being played, and so you go along with that triplet and you play it forte, a regular comfortable forte, and hold on to it for a little bit. And bring it down when and when you bring it down in dynamic, bring it down to piano. You stop doing vibrato, and then you can slowly accelerate, accelerando through the rest of it until you get to the high G. This the the last high G up and over here, because then you have to retard, and then uh, land on the high F with the rest of the orchestra because they're just playing d -d 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 they're playing um, eighth notes I believe and so you have to make it to where it would it, it makes sense for whenever they would come back in and each time with each different figure so like on the second figure I would take this the triplet section at the very beginning just a little bit slower and and it, have it be a little bit louder and hold on to the high F a little bit longer than what I did with the first uh, section. Come down to the piano again and crescendo, accelerando through the whole thing again with the same concept as the first one. And you save the best for last with the third one where you are the most dramatic, you take the most time at the very beginning, you have the slowest triplet figure, and have the loudest dynamic, because, again, these are all different characters. So, without further ado, I will play these for you. semester. And there was quite a bit to enjoy. So, um, 
I hope that you gain, learn something from this um, lecture recital. Thank you.